How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the poly buffer object and why it is the best object for if you want to create some sort of sample playback system and you have tons of different sound samples you want to use. This is going to let you play all of them. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we are going to create the poly buffer object and we need to give it a name. This is important. If you just click off, you're gonna see it's oranged out. It needs a name in order to work. So we're gonna call this all samples. I'm gonna capitalize the S, that's important because it's programming and capitals matter. Um, and now that we've created the poly buffer object, it's, we've given it a name, basically, what polybuffer is, is it's like your regular buffer object, except it can hold several different samples at once. And rather than reading in a single file, you're gonna read in a whole folder of sound samples. There's two different ways we could do that. We could just use the message read folder, patch it into our polybuffer, and then if you double click this object, it's gonna open up a dialog box. You just go find that folder you want, double click it, and it's gonna load right in. Alternatively, we can use the drop file object, which we talked about in the last video. Go check that out. Um, if you just double create, double click and create a new drop file object, you have this window box area where you can just drag and drop folders into, and we can then say prepend read folder and patch this into that and that into the poly buffer. And then you can just drag and drop a folder of samples right into this area and it's gonna work also. It's just gonna load them right in there. And since I have that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Drag and drop those sound samples in there. It's gonna take a second to load, but it just did load. And now if I double click poly buffer, you're gonna see all those samples are in here. Their file names are in there. The buffer name is in there. Uh, the duration, the channel, the sample rate, all this information about all these sound samples is contained. And that's like super useful that it has all of this listed here if you needed that info for whatever you're trying to build yourself. And you can actually also very easily get that information out. There's a little tab on in the help folder on that. Um, if you just click the info tab, this explains how you can use the get messages to get all that info out. And you know, the count, the size, the buffer list, all of that. Super helpful. Um, definitely check that out. That aside, the main thing we want to point out right now is that the buffer name is all samples dot one, all samples dot two, dot three, so on and so forth, or literally all our samples. And you can see that each one of those references one sample that I had in that folder. So if we wanted to do playback of these samples, um, we could use something like the groove object and all we have to do is have the name of the groove object match the buffer name here, which is exactly how groove works. We've talked about that in several different videos. We just need to change the name of groove to all samples dot one or all samples dot two to play that specific sample. So that's also really easy to do. Uh, let's go ahead, let's create our groove object and we're just going to start by calling it all samples with no dot anything or whatever. It's not super important to start with. We're going to create a sig object. We're going to patch that into the groove object and we're going to press T, create a toggle, patch that into our sig object. Line that all up somewhere like right there. Um, and this just is our basic setup to start and stop playback. Super, super easy, super straightforward. What we need to do next is we need to create some kind of convention to create the name with the correct sample number. And what we need to do in order to get the correct sample number uh, is we need to get the count of our poly buffer. And again, there's two different ways we could do that. We could manually do it with the get count message. And if we just patch that into our poly buffer object and we attach a message box down here because this is our dump out outlet. So that's where the get message is going to dump its information and we click get count and you see it says count 728 so i had 728 samples in that folder and that is definitely a lot of samples that is the manual method to get the count but we could also automate this more if we wanted to we can add a trigger object with the letter t and we could put the get count message in our trigger object and we can also put an l for the list and if we patch that in here in between our prepend and our poly buffer we can send the prepend read folder with the folder path as a list to our poly buffer and then we can send the message get count directly from the trigger object itself 
So anytime we drag and drop a folder into our drop file now, it's going to load that in and it's going to output the count immediately after doing that, which is perfect. It's, it's setting it up so that we don't really have to do all this manual clicking around in order to try out new folders of different samples. Um, just as an extra assurance, I'm going to add the clear message into polybuffer as well to make sure that it is empty every single time we go to load a new folder and this is just going to happen in this order it's going to clear it it's going to send the new folder uh destination and then it's going to get the count of that new folder and we can route that out using the route object so that's just going to strip off the count uh, header and now when we click this or drag and drop in that folder it's going to patch through here through this and we're going to get that number out perfect right there which is what we need for the random object which we're going to use to trigger playback of a sample you can do this kind of however you want um, but for simplicity I am just going to randomly pick a new sample to play so we're gonna route the count into the right inlet which sets the range for the random number and we're gonna patch a button into the left to uh, send it a bang and trigger the random out and we're going to patch that into an integer box so we can just see what this is so one more time I'm gonna click get count and it's gonna patch the count out through here it's gonna route it strip that count message off that number is gonna come out this patch cord and that is now set for a random range so every time we click this button we're going to get a random number between 0 and 1 less than 727 and you saw that polybuffer it starts at 1 not 0 so we're additionally going to just add 1 to our output and that will give us all the correct numbers for every single sample we have, starting at one, going all the way up to 728. So cool, that's the first step. We have the way to create our number. We now just need to update the name of the groove object to be all samples dot this number. Super easy to do that too. We're going to use a new object I haven't really talked about that much in any video, if at all maybe. Um, and it's called the Sprint F. And honestly, this object deserves its own tutorial video. I will get there eventually. But for now, just know it, it is used to create different kinds of naming conventions, um, but it uses a different set of variables to do that. So rather than like dollar signs at one, dollar sign two variables, we're actually going to use the percentage sign and say S, which is our symbol. Then we're gonna do period. Um, and we're going to then do the percentage sign again and I for an integer and this is actually a very easy implementation of the sprint F object uh, like I said it's just using a different variable sign so rather than dollar sign we're using the percentage as our variable um, and we're signifying that the variable first is a symbol and the second variable is an integer and we're just going to combine our symbol and our integer into one naming convention with that period right there in the middle which is exactly the format that we need for the poly buffer because you can see that's what it is it's a symbol period integer um so let's go ahead and patch our integer into the right inlet the second one which is our variable for that integer that percentage i and then we just need to send the name of the buffer um through here every single time we trigger it there's a lot of different ways you could set this up I just found this to be pretty easy so I'm just gonna create a message called all samples because that's the name we gave to it and we're just gonna patch that button out there and into here and out of this outlet now we will get all samples dot whatever random number is chosen and you see that worked and it'll happen every single time we hit this button and that's perfect all we need to do now is set that to be the name of the groove object which is also very easy we're going to say prepend name and the name message to the groove object we'll change the name of the groove to be the name that we send it which is this and that is the name of the buffer here so it's all going to work out and now this groove is called all samples.65 so if we patch that into our easy deck, our audio output, we'll just patch it into the left and right channel, and then we'll click on this toggle. That's that sample. Um, real fast, I'm going to turn at, 
on, at looping one on, so it'll loop, and we'll just do new samples. And that's the entire tutorial video. Um, hopefully you find this helpful. It's a base, it's a very basic setup of this implementation of polybuffer, but it should be enough to get you started to use it in your own projects, however you need it. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. If you learned something, please remember to like and subscribe. It's how I know you learned something. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, bye bye.